Hi everyone. So today I'd like to talk about making studies and drawing a little anatomy. If everything worked out, I will upload this time lapse in four times speed, so you can crank it down to 0.25 speed and have it at a one-to-one -one time scale. Hopefully it will be in 60 frames, because having it in 30 frames and cranking it down four times is going to be a pain in the ass to watch, so if I get it to 60, that's perfect. If not, then uh, I'm sorry. I'll be swooping in every now and then and tell you about what I was thinking while drawing, you know, to better explain the process, why I did what and how I did it, so you can try it out for yourself. So let's just begin at the absolute beginning. What I was drawing until now is just a little bit of an action line and some construction work for the upper body and the stomach. You don't need to start with the torso, you can just start with anything that gets you going. I think it's the easiest way, at least for me, to start with torso or head, something along these lines. And especially when doing construction work, I think it's very important to always be mindful that whatever you draw, it's not going to be final. Everything is going to change and you just draw stuff that will help you determine where goes what. At this point, I do not care if it looks good. I do not care if, you know, it's aesthetically pleasing. I just want to have down the shape, the form of what I want to draw. But I am also mindful that I may change up things later. And you will see that once I did like a little bit of a cleaner line art thingy, that I think I will change the stomach because it was quite elongated. And, you know, that's just how it goes. You change up things when you see it. There is no need to commit to whatever you've drawn before.
When I think my line art is elaborate enough for me to paint over it, I usually select everything to have a big silhouette. In this case, I made clipping masks over the silhouette, so I can't paint out of them, but in a actual, like, big painting, I would make the silhouette and then control click it every now and then to have the selection of the entire silhouette without having to do clipping masks because the individual layers that I will be making may end up needing to be clipping masks as well. For studies, I think either way is fine, whatever you like. Now I proceed to make super basic value changes, which means the clothes are going to be on a separate layer, so they're above the skin layer, and on the skin layer I usually want to have strong shadow and light shapes, which basically means that there's just one value for shadow and one value for light. I recommend using a hard brush for that, but you can also do it with the airbrush if you just feel more comfortable having that kind of smoothness to your strokes. I paint in these shadow shapes looking at the reference and stylizing them so they also look good in the painting. They should be on the narrow degree of being realistic, but still artistically looking pleasing. So if there is a shadow that just looks weird, you do not need to draw it exactly like that. You can tweak it a little bit so the form reads better. After I have blocked in my shadow shapes, I go in with an eraser and a airbrush or just a softer brush and start to play with these hard and soft edges that our bodies have. In my head, I put major muscles into one group and paint them out so they look like this muscle group but not the exact individual muscles. Also notice that I'm not very zoomed in at the moment. I have quite a big screen and most of the time I'm relatively far away from it so I can see the whole picture as a whole and I am working on the entire picture as a whole. I also focus the detail on my focal point, which is the point where I want the people to look. Usually this means with humans or, you know, figures, the face, but in this case I do not want it to be the face, so I am absolutely neglecting that. After adjusting my shadow values and my base skin value, I start rendering a little bit on the clothes and adding some tiny details in highlights. And that is about it. After the highlights, I just look at it as a whole and see if there's something really bothering me, if something does not look pleasing or pleasing enough, and then I try to change that. And when I'm done with that, the study is done. 
Now, obviously, you can take this or any study into an extreme and really make a one-to-one -one copy. In my case, I think I am learning about the most things when I do 30 to 50 minutes, you know, like one hour kind of stuff, because I probably get the best of both worlds. I can start rendering a little and I also have to do construction all the time. Also keep in mind that if you're making a study, the goal is not to make a one-to-one -one copy, but an artistic copy of what you see. So if you draw in a cartoonish style, then make a stylized study. Whatever suits you, you do. And with that, I wish you happy drawing and until next time.